All right, so let's keep pressing through. Find the radiation resistance of the wire joining two ends of the dipole. And in, in this case, it's an electric dipole connected by a wire where we have a plus charge at one end and a minus charge at the other. Show that R is equal to 790 D divided by lambda squared ohms. Okay, so uh, D would be some length of the wire and lambda the wavelength. Um, where Exactly, where lambda is the wavelength of the radiation. For the wires in arbitrary ratio, say D equal 5 centimeters. Should you worry about the radi radiative contribution to the total resistance? Okay, what we need to know is that the oscillating electric dipole current and the radiation power or radiated power is given as such. Negative Q omega sine omega T Z hat. And then the power was, this is the average power, of course, uh, per time cycle, um, which was gained from the pointing vector, as you recall from chapter 8. So, you know, let's uh, plug everything in. We know that the power from the current goes from the Ohm's law and the power joules power rule. Uh, so we have P equal I squared R. So if we square uh, the I that was given and we multiply by R, you know, we can see what that power is. So with that sine theta, what we need to do is take the time average of this. And we know that the time average of sine squared is equal to one half. So uh, we plug that in and we could see what the actual power is uh, for the current anyways. Now the power from the radiation, okay, as you see, we use that formula and we just highlight in red that P naught squared is what we're after. But if you remember, P naught was just equal to the Q times, well, P naught was a dipole moment, which was Q times the distance that they were opposed, okay, or separated by. So that would be QD. And if we square that, we just get Q squared D squared. So if we equate these two, we see that one half cancels with that uh, 12 in the denominator of the radiated power to cancel down to six. The Q squareds cancel. And we have a factor of the omega squared canceling with that omega to the fourth. So once we simplify that down, we're just left with mu naught d squared omega squared over 6 pi c. But since omega is equal to 2 pi c over lambda, if you recall from our uh, plane mechanics or wave mechanics in chapter 9, we can plug that in, square it, and then we see we get more cancellations, right? We get a factor of pi and c canceled in the denominator, as well as a factor of uh, 2 from the denominator, hence the reduction of 6 to 3, with that uh, 2 pi c squared term coming in from omega. And so if we simplify it down, we're left with 2 pi uh, mu naught c over 3, d squared over lambda squared. So now we have that ratio of d squared over lambda squared, and we can just uh, take the square out of it when we apply all the other constants. And indeed, when we calculate it through, we get 789.6 d over lambda squared ohms. So we're good to go there. Now, if we plug in the dimensions given for the wires in, in, the, in arbitrary radio with d equal 5 times 10 to the negative 2, which was given as 5 centimeters, now we put it to meters, which that should have been a meters on there. Uh, we know that radio frequencies are about 10 to the 3 meters for their wavelength. And so uh, plugging those two facts in, we get uh, 790 times 5 uh, times 10 to the negative 5, since we're taking 10 to the negative 2 and dividing it by 3. Negative 2 minus 3 gives us negative 5. Square that, and we see that we get 2 times 10 to the negative 6 ohms, which is negligible compared to the ohmic resistance. Okay? So we're good to go. We don't have to really worry about it. Uh, there will be an even more striking case of this in the magnetic radiation.